this is how I use local vocal for real time transcription with buffering and read on translation. Hello everyone, today I want to show you a tutorial of how to use local vocal to get real time transcription with translation. What I have here in my OBS scene is my audio input from the microphone where I set local vocal transcription as an audio filter. I'm using the Whisper Tiny model, so it runs pretty fast. I enabled my advanced settings mode and also partial transcription. I'm pulling this all the way down to 500 milliseconds. So I'm getting a very snappy real-time transcription of what I'm saying, exactly what I'm saying it. The other thing I have set up in my local vocal is file output. I'm saving this to just an output text file. And I have a second OBS text source in here reading from the file. I'm also enabling chat log mode to only get two lines and a custom text extent so that I get nice wrapping of the text. This way, what I'm saying in real time shows up in yellow in here, but once I finish a sentence, it is committed to the file and will show up in the chat log. This makes sure that people have enough time to read your captions before they disappear. Now let's try to add real time translation. I'm going to add another OBS text source. We'll call it translation real time and just let it go anywhere. Back in the audio output, I will enable translation. For the translation options, we have many settings. First, we need to pick a model. Whispered based translation will actually not do any transcription. It will actually do directly translation from Whisper directly to the target language. We would like to pick one of the other models that will allow us to keep the original English transcription, but also provide translation in a different language. So I'm going to pick M2M100 in here and choose the output language to be Spanish. I'm going to change this to my translation real-time output so that I'm getting the translation in a different text source. The rest of the options we can leave the same for now. And let's just see how this works and set this up. Now, let's set up these translated captions so that they appear nicely. I'm going to put them roughly in here. Select a smaller font, like 48. Select the background color, roughly like that. And maybe for the actual color, we'll select something like blue. Now we can set up the custom text extents in the same way to roughly 700 by 300. Now when I'll be speaking, whenever I finish a sentence, the translation should be coming up in Spanish. We'll choose a bigger font. Now everything that I'm saying should be translated immediately to Spanish on top, but we also get the English transcription as well as the running captions from the file. Since this is real-time translation, the captions are going to disappear. So we can set this up in the same way. We'll hide this and add another OBS text source. We'll call this translated file. And the translated file is going to read from the file that we had before just with the ES extension. Enable chat log with just the two lines. Again, custom text extends around 700 by 500. And we'll change the font again to something like 72. And the color can be our bright blue with some background. So now we have the Spanish translation coming up from the file and it won't disappear. We will actually get a running translation from the file on screen. Looking at some of the other options here we have for translation would be translation with context. This means how many sentences are taken into account when delivering a new translation sentence. Using more context will give the translation engine more context about what you are saying, but it might also confuse it. Keeping it at one is a good option. Input token style has to do with the model you're using. It can either be M2M100 and T5 tokens. The M2M100 model would need the M2M100 token. Sampling temperature tells the translation engine how much randomness to use. We don't need to set this up very high. Actually keeping it low is a pretty good idea. Repetition penalty, we can keep it at two. This prevents the translation engine from repeating itself. The beam size, this helps the translation engine choose the best sentence to output. Keeping it at one will make it sure that it runs pretty fast. You can increase this and see perhaps a better accuracy. Max decoding length and input length will tell the translation engine how many words to expect in the input and the output. We can keep these at 65. The no repeat engram size does roughly the same as the repetition penalty and has to do with how much the translation engine is going to penalize repeating patterns inside the output. So keeping it at the default makes a lot of sense. 
You can change this to any other language in real time. If we want to go from Spanish, we want to go maybe to German. We can just set this up in here. And I will see a German translation. The only thing we need to do to make sure this works is to point our translated from file to the actual file that contains the German translation, which would be the DE output. Now the translation should be from English to German. If you want to get higher accuracy transcription and translation, you may want to choose bigger models. I'm using the Whisper Tiny right now because my audio quality is quite good and I'm speaking very clearly. But if your audio quality is rougher, you may want to choose the base, medium, small, or even the large model for Whisper if you have GPU acceleration. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.